So fibrous proteins are super important, but I have to confess I'm biased. I'm on the life science side of things. So let's head on to talk about water soluble proteins. We have beta sheets. Forget about that small helix. It's almost entirely beta sheets. You're going to need to get used to this. That's Definitions are not perfect or strict when it comes to real proteins. We have proteins that are almost entirely alpha helical and we have proteins that are a mix of helices and sheets. And I'm going to start going through these classes in detail, uh, starting with beta sheets in a second. But before doing this, I'm going to need to tell you a little about a nomenclature. These are water soluble, but I also call them globular proteins. Globular. The reason for that is mostly historical. Some of the very first folds, not just some of the very first folds we determined were this hemoglobin and then its sibling, myoglobin. Hemoglobin is four units and myoglobin is just one, but the units are very similar. And that unit is called a globin fold. Uh, or a glob and so globin and globular, that nomenclature kind of stuck. So the globin, globin fold was the poster child for water soluble proteins and today we've just extended that. So all globular proteins are water soluble. You can think of them as roughly spherical and uh, globe like, but even that is not true. Many of them are, but not all. You will have things that are water soluble but are quite extended. For all of these, you will also frequently see various cartoon representations. Um, I and at least if you have multiple pens and everything, I occasionally like to say color helis is red and sheets blue. At least if you have colors, that's not always going to work. Even that type of structure can get very complicated if you have lots of helices and sheets. So occasionally we will use these even simpler representations. You can use say circles and triangles. That's, that's great because it's going to work even if you have black and white. There was a day when there were no color printers. And then you somehow just draw lines between them to schematically show how they're connected. Because again, remember the previous slide, when you have very large structures, it can be difficult to make sense of them. But by drawing this schematically, just the secondary structure units, we can stress the important parts. For instance, are your beta sheets parallel or anti-parallel? Is there a helix or a sheet there? Don't worry about the specific length. Is it helix sheet, helix sheet, helix sheet, or are the helices in one sequence and then you get the sheets? You probably get the idea. But before we look at the really complicated mixtures, let's start by looking at some pure beta sheet globular proteins.